Blessed be the kingdom of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Welcome to St. Peter. I'm Jared, the pastor here, where our mission is to build the church and <clears throat> by developing fully devoted followers of Jesus. Let's see, and in today's sermon, we'll continue our preaching series about the power of God, hearing today that the power of God, of course, is in the name of Jesus, says specifically how that power raises the dead, and we mean that quite literally. Now, today's worship, of course, is something we all do together, so you're invited to join the congregation's parts, which are, and to sing the songs with us, which are printed in bold type in these bulletins, and of course, things that are up here on the screen for your convenience. And then for those of you who are listening on the radio or who are watching later on YouTube, we'll point you over to our website, which is stpeterhallettsville.org. Again, that's stpeterhallettsville.org. Go to that online drop menu and click on orders, and you can download today's order of service uh, as a PDF for your participation as you listen or watch. And before we begin, as always, allow me to draw your attention to these uh, ivory Connection cards in the middle of your bulletins. These are here to help us connect with God and with one another in our everyday lives. And if you're a regular attender or a member here, we ask that you please fill out your name and either your phone number or your email address. Later on the service, we all place these in the offering boxes as we walk past them. And if you look to the bench there in front of you, you'll see these blue prayer request cards. If we can be praying for you or for someone you know in a specific way, please write that down in the space provided. Later on the service, you may also place these in the uh, offering boxes, and you'll know the people of St. Peter are praying for your prayer requests. And speaking of uh, prayers, uh, we ask your prayers as we share some sad news with you uh, the, uh, with, for the family of uh, Dorothy Lorfing. She passed away uh, very early in the morning on Wednesday morning. Her funeral is scheduled for uh, Saturday at 10 a.m. here. So again, please keep... Uh, Dorothy's family uh, in your prayers, uh, Lucille and, and, and John and all of them. All right. Now today, we celebrate the sixth Sunday after Pentecost, again in that very long green season of the church here. And today we hear Jesus perform two miracles, right? We will hear the story of the woman who was uh, suffering from an illness for 12 years, and as well as Jesus raising a 12-year-old girl from the dead. No, that's not a mistake. We'll talk about it in the sermon. Don't worry. And of course, happy 4th of July to all of you folks. Hope you guys enjoy your afternoons here as we are quite grateful always for all the freedoms and those things which we have in this country which God has blessed us with. And again, for those of you listening and watching, we'll point you over to our website, which is stpeterhallettsville.org. And once you're there, you can uh, go to that um, online drop menu and click on orders and download today's order of service as you participate uh, over the radio or watching us on YouTube. And now as we hear God's word proclaimed and we join with our song and prayers, I invite you quickly to look at the back of your connection card. You'll see a few simple next steps you may take in offering your life to God today. Of course, this morning we'll have our regular, uh, regular uh, coffee and refreshments over in the fellowship hall. And following that will be a pastor's Bible study. And then rally day is coming. That's our fall kickoff and homecoming. It includes a bunch of fun stuff that day, like blessing of the backpacks for all of our students, installation of our Sunday school and Solid Rock teachers, all that. And that'll be on uh, August 8th. And you've heard me mention several times now that VBS signups are open and we are starting to see the roster, uh, that roster get filled up. And so VBS uh, proper is for kids entering kindergarten through fourth grade. For everyone else, it's an opportunity to serve or to uh, donate, those sorts of things. And um, can, everybody can do all that, indicate uh, if they're coming or going to help online. Um, and then next Sunday... We have a volunteers meeting, and so even if you uh, think you can help at VBS, come on down even if you haven't signed up. And of course, VBS is at the end of the month. <laughs> All right, and then of course, don't forget about those men in mission plates to go on July 17. The details are in the bulletin. Uh, tickets are with a $10 donation. That event is to help get ready for the Kalachi Fest later in the fall. And then a few weeks ago, as you know, we hosted a CPR class, and now we've got a follow-up for it with basic first aid. That'll be at the end of the month on the 25th. Uh, you do not uh, know you did not need to attend the CPR in order to attend the first aid. You can do them separately. Same class offered two different times that day. Details are in your bulletins and in your email. So to stand and take our first step together with our opening song, O Beautiful for Spacious Skies.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are born captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. Glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a call and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you who believe and repent of all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. For God, heavenly King, God of the covenant, in our baptism you call us to proclaim the coming of your kingdom. Give us the courage you gave the apostles, that we may faithfully witness to your love and peace in every circumstance of life. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Our next steps memory verse is from 2 Timothy Chapter 1, verse 10. Our Savior, Jesus Christ, has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Our first reading is from the fourth chapter of 2 Kings. When the child was older, he went out one day to his father among the reapers. He complained to his father, Oh, my head, my head. The father said to his servant, Carry him to his mother. He carried him and brought him to his mother. The child sat on her lap until noon, and he died. She went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God, closed the door on him, and left. Then she called to her husband and said, Send me one of the servants and one of the donkeys, so that I may quickly go to the man of God and come back again. He said, Why go to him today? Is it Neither, it is neither new moon or Sabbath. She said, it will be all right. Then she saddled the donkey and said to her servant, urge the animal on, do not hold back 
for me unless I tell you. So she set out and came to the man of God at Mount Carmel. When the man of God saw her coming, he said to Jehazi, his servant, look, there is the Shunammite woman. Run at once to her and meet her and say to her, are you all right? Is your husband all right? Is the child all right? She answered, it is all right. When she came to the man of God at the mountain, she caught hold of his feet. Jehazi approached to push her away. But the man of God said, let her alone, for she is in bitter distress. The Lord has hidden it from me and has not told me. Then she said, did I ask my Lord for a son? Did I not say, do not mislead me? She said to Jehazi, Gird up your loins and take my staff in your hand and go. If you meet anyone, give no greeting. If anyone greets you, do not answer. And lay my staff on the face of the child. Then the mother of the child said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave without you. So he rose up and followed her. Jehazi went on ahead and laid the staff on the face of the child, but there was no sound or sign of life. He came back to meet him and told him, the child has not awakened. When Elisha came into the house, he saw the child lying dead on his bed. So he went in and closed the door on the two of them and prayed to the Lord. Then he got up on the bed and lay upon the child, putting his mouth upon his mouth, his eyes upon his eyes, and his hands upon his hands. And while he lay bent over him, the flesh of the child became warm. He got down, walked at once to and fro in the room, then got up again and bent over him. The child sneezed seven times, and the child opened his eyes. Elisha summoned Jehazi and said, Call the Shunammite woman. So he called her. When she came back to him, he said, Take your son. She came and fell at his feet, bowing to the ground. Then she took her son and left. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Our response in meditation, we will read responsively from Psalm 123. To you I lift up my eyes, to you enthroned in the heavens. As, as the, the eyes of the servants, servants look to the hand of their masters, masters and the, the eyes of a maid to the, to the hand, hand of, of her mistress. mistress. So our eyes look to the Lord our God until he show us his mercy. Have, have mercy, mercy upon us, us O Lord, Lord, have mercy, for, for we have had more than enough of, of contempt. contempt. Too much of the scorn of the indolent rich and of the derision of the proud. Our second reading is from the sixth chapter of Second Corinthians. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of our God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the, in the power of God with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in dishonor and and honor, in ill repute and good repute, we are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see. We are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our affections, but only in yours. In return, I speak as to children. Open wide 
your hearts also. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Gospel according to St. Mark, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side of the sea, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came, and when he saw him, fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. So he went with him. And a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had, and she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak, for she said, If I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. And immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you? How can you say, Who touched me? He looked around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him and told the whole truth to him. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter's dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. And he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this, they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Continue our song.
Many are probably unfamiliar with that Old Testament story. It's not one that shows up in our regular cycle of Sunday readings. And admittedly, it's easy to confuse the stories of Elijah and his successor, Elisha. In fact, some Bible scholars, and you don't have to be a faithful believer to be a Bible scholar, some of those folks think that they were really the same person. In this story, the Shunammite woman's son was added today for the sake of today's focus. And yes, for those of you who were here last time, we heard the same gospel story again today, yes. And I can tell you a joke about that later during Bible study. In fact, we heard there's so much action in that Bible story that we decided in sermon planning that each miracle needed its own attention this time around in the lectionary. And St. Mark has this habit when telling the story of Jesus to start one story, to interrupt it with something else, and then to return to the first story, just as we hear today. And something I like about both stories is how confident, how matter-of-fact, how undistracted both Jesus and Elisha are. It's just another day in the office for the two of them with their savoir faire. And notice as well, the humanity of the parents and their grief. The woman says to Elijah, Did I ask my Lord for a son? Did I not say, Do not mislead me? Because Elijah had prophesied that she would have a son after her many years of wishing and hoping. And one can feel the synagogue leader Jairus' earnestness and worry and later disappointment as this sick woman comes and interrupts Jesus on his way to their home. And so last Sunday, we focused on the healing of the sick woman. And we noted that for us, a figurative interpretation was necessary, since we don't have access to those same circumstances of the story, despite the fact that a healing seems perfectly natural. And for practically all of us here, the so-called healing touch comes into our lives through scientific medical arts, not through supernatural means which must be entreated. And with Jairus' daughter, we have sort of the opposite. Despite an obviously supernatural event, we are faced with a quite literal interpretation. As we will say in the Creed in just a few moments, we believe in the resurrection of the dead and the life everlasting. No ifs, ands, or buts. In fact, for those of us who are baptized, which I suspect is everyone in the room here, uh, we've received already through baptism what the book of Revelation calls the first resurrection. The regeneration of our dead spirits is already given to us in holy baptism, even as we await that second resurrection of our bodies still to come when Jesus returns. And no, that's not a metaphor. Spiritual doesn't mean some inner sense of who you truly are. It means your spirit or your soul that God created and gave to you and joined to your body that he also created and gave to you. Both are in need of revitalization. Now, as we've noted earlier this morning, this preaching series focuses on the power of God at work in the name of Jesus or in the authority of Jesus. Right? That's something the crowds notice very quickly about Jesus. He has his own authority to say and do things. He doesn't have to rely on anyone or anything else. He doesn't have to provide references and citations. And of course, we know what the characters in the story at this point don't yet. Namely, that Jesus is God's Son. He himself is God in the flesh. And yet in our story today, we hear this little quirk from Jesus, telling once again folks to not talk about the miracle he performs. And he does this frequently for a few reasons, one of which is what he says at the beginning of the gospel, repent and believe the good news, which is the forgiveness of sins and new life in Jesus' name. That's what he wants folks to focus on, not on the sort of show that follows him around. And so we'll consider how the power of God is present in Jesus to heal the sick, to raise the dead, this power that it extends to disciples, and that all who seek him are healed. The Bible, the Bible has ten stories of people being raised from the dead. Of course, these two today, and Jesus' own resurrection. 
And then there's a bunch of people who are resurrected uh, in Matthew's gospel at the same time as Jesus. And then there are two others that Jesus raises, Lazarus and then the widow of Nain's son. And then Elijah raises the widow of Zarephath's son. And Elisha's bones raise a, uh, a dead man. And then in Acts, Tabitha is raised, as is Eutychus. And I think we get a sense of St. Luke's sense of humor here. Uh, Eutychus falls asleep during St. Paul's all-nighter of a sermon, and he falls out a window and dies. And so St. Paul has to stop his sermon, walk downstairs, revive the boy, go back upstairs, and then he keeps preaching until dawn. It could be worse, right? So as far as kinds of miracles go, raising the dead is common enough. And yet I believe none of us have ever seen such a thing. The Bible is quite serious about this resurrection business. Now often in Bible scholarship, you'll find a distinction in vocabulary between resuscitation and resurrection. Jesus was resurrected, uh, and, the, and he promises the very same to us. But these other nine stories are resuscitations, whereby natural life is restored, and these people eventually die for real, according to nature. And speaking of resuscitations, you may very well have witnessed such a thing, say, through CPR or some other medical intervention. So take, for instance, Romans chapter 6, or 1 Corinthians 15, or 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, to get a taste of how literal and serious the Bible is about this raise the dead business for us. Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so too might we walk in newness of life. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we also will live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. Now, if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. And then those who have died in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we of all people are most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For the Lord himself, with the cry of command, with the archangel's call, with the sound of the God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will raise first. This is perfectly literal for us. Just as Jesus was raised to new life beyond death, so too shall we be raised. Each of these nine other stories supports the tenth one, where Jesus is resurrected. In today's lesson, two things in particular stand out. One, the difference between Jairus' fear and Jesus' invitation to faith. And then there's the difference between, number two, the difference between Jesus' assertion that the girl is sleeping and the crowd's mockery of him. In fact, this is how it goes for us, right? We're so sure of our own lives, right? We can't imagine not having them by definition. So that when death is near, we don't exactly know what to do, how to act. I mean, we can really feel coming off the page Jairus' grief and Jesus' comforting invitation to only believe. It's just like the raising of Lazarus in this respect. In fact, if you look on your green study and share sheets, you'll see uh, some more things about that story with Lazarus there in number two. And this past week, I had a funeral. And of course, I mentioned already to you this morning about Dorothy's funeral this Saturday. And so even at the end of a long and fulfilling life, we fear what life will be like without our loved ones. Jesus' invitation to Jairus is also to us. Don't fear, only believe. Perhaps that's easier said than done. I get it. And St. Paul reminds us that we do not grieve as those without hope. Grieving is okay. It's a natural part of God's creation. It's one of the ways that he sends his healing to us. But what does Jesus tell Jairus, and by extension us? She's just 
sleeping. What? Perhaps if we will admit it, we share in the crowd disbelief and cynicism and mockery. But what did we just sing? Asleep in Jesus, blessed sleep, from which none ever wakes to weep, with holy confidence to sing that death has lost his cruel sting. Yes, for those who die, it is like a sleep from which they will be awakened, the faithful to everlasting life and blessedness, and the wicked to everlasting punishment. And question four has a few more details for you on these green sheets. St. Paul phrases it this way. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable and we will be changed. And he reminds us, the sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. This is exactly what we hear in the story of Jairus and his daughter. Sin and death and evil strike again, taking another loved one, and yet Jesus brings his victory over them, just like that. At once the little girl gets up as Jesus calls to her. And Jesus' invitation to not fear, only believe, is vindicated. For Jesus, raising the dead is no more difficult than waking someone up. He shows us this is so that we might believe in him and his promises of new life beyond the reach of death. That even as he died and resurrected, so too shall it happen for us. And again, all this is quite literal. Our bodies will be raised without sickness and death and sin and evil to affect them or to infect them. Now what they will look like is certainly beyond what we can imagine. But we won't be zombies like the living dead or Frankenstein's monster or Casper the friendly ghost and so forth. And we've left something out of the story. How does it end? The little girl is given something to eat. Of course, when you're feeling better after having been sick, one often does have an appetite. And a ghost doesn't eat food and zombies eat brains, right? At least on TV. And so she's really, truly alive again, yes. But it also points us to what awaits us after the resurrection of our own bodies. That great heavenly feast that has no end, living in God's kingdom with him forever. That's one reason that we eat after funerals. Do not fear, only believe. And she's only sleeping. Are not figures of speech or good advice or just another way of looking at things. They are Jesus' invitation to see the power of God at work in him to conquer our last enemy of death so that nothing, not even the grave, can stand between or hold apart us and him. And then when he's good and ready, at the acceptable time, the day of salvation, St. Paul writes, at just the right moment he will call to us, little children, get up from your sleep. And he will feed us the very bread of life at his endless banquet of love and life where he has already prepared a place for us. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from From heaven. The power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. 
and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ on behalf of the church, the world, and one another. Father, sometimes we give you thanks and then gulp. Thank you for our, your prophets, even when their words are hard. Thank you for your all-sufficient grace, even when it doesn't remove suffering. Thank you for making us your emissaries and missionaries even when the world holds you in contempt. Thank you and deal patiently with us while we gulp. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. You commissioned Ezekiel to speak to your people and your son chose the 12 to spread the gospel. Bestow your spirit upon the church so it may speak words of warning and grace to all people. Grant that many are brought to repentance faith and redemption in Christ Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Grant your all-sufficient grace to your persecuted servants. By their faithful witness, turn their enemies toward the cross of Christ, there to be forgiven and transformed. Bestow your favor and guidance upon your missionaries, especially those serving in dangerous places. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Thank you for calling this congregation into fellowship with your son. Give us the gifts of the Holy Spirit and make us disciples and heralds for your kingdom. Grant us courage to boldly share the good news. We pray for our mission to develop fully devoted followers of Jesus and to support Solid Rock, our mission in action. Give us kindness so that others may gladly hear it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. You have given us this good land as our heritage. Make us always to remember your generosity and constantly to do your will. Save us from violence, discord, confusion, and every evil course of action. Give us what outward prosperity may be your will, but above all things, give us faith in you that our nation may glorify your name and be a blessing to all peoples. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Keep our military personnel and first responders in your care. Equip them to secure and further the blessings of peace, justice, and liberty. Help us to support and encourage their families until they are reunited. Heal all whose lives have been shattered by the violence of war. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. St. Paul prayed that his thorn in the flesh might be removed. We pray for all who suffer, remembering today especially Pat Kessler, Jeanette Litzman, Diane Kiner, Betty Thornton, Rocky Yan, Jackie McGowan, Gloria Irvin, Brian Sullivan, the Evans family, Anders Eckert, John Thompson, James Evans, missionary pastor John Schmidt and family, Joe Mosheshek, Charlie Garman, Carrie Besetzny, Dwayne Dixon, and Doe Stotenberg. We also pray for our military, law enforcement, and firefighter first responders, frontline workers, patients and their families in harm's way, Safe House Church, President Biden, our country, and all those facing unrest and unemployment. Heal them according to your will Give them confidence in your grace, which is sufficient for their needs. Thank you for all caregivers. Give them competence, kindness, and patience. Keep all for whom we pray in close communion with those who love them. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Most Holy Father, we praise you for your never-failing mercy. We entrust 
to all that mercy of our departed loved ones. And we are praying today especially for the families of Dorothy Lorfing, Archie Koenig, Henry Kubechka, Carolyn Trelitza, Gladys Schimmick, Heida Lindy Schultz, Leona Bennettson, Margaret Langlinay, and Joy Lynn Gunn. Wipe away the tears of all who grieve. Keep us close to your heart throughout our lives. Support us with your grace and heal us with your forgiving love. Lead us by your spirit into the kingdom, won for us by your son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, and hear our prayer. prayer. Eternal God, without your grace, no promise is sure. Strengthen Kevin and Annalie, who were married here yesterday, with patience, kindness, gentleness, and all other gifts of your spirit, so that they may fulfill the vows they have made. Keep them faithful to each other. Fill them with such love and joy that they may build a home of peace and welcome. Guide them by your word to serve you all their days. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Hear and graciously answer our prayers, dear Lord, as it is best for us and most glorifies your holy name. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. See you. Mention our offering very quickly. Of course, if you brought it with you, you can place it here in the box. Um, if you did not bring it with you, you may uh, certainly mail it to us or take advantage of one of our three safe, secure, simple ways of electronic giving. All the details about that are up on our St. Peter website, stpeterhousefield.org. Click on that green button that says Give to St. Peter. Now, in the offering, God gathers what he has sown among us. And these gifts become a feast of plenty as they provide the ministry and the service of this congregation, which is the body of Christ for the sake of the world. More than that, he sets his table with the living presence of his very own son, giving us the bread of life to strengthen us so that we may become that which we receive, the body of Christ. Now stand and sing our offering song, Let the Vineyards Be Fruitful. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us in what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. And lift the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through who Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
You are indeed holy, almighty, and merciful God. You are most holy and great as the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only Son, that whoever believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Having come into the world, he fulfilled for us your holy will and accomplished our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broken and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and his promise to come again, we give thanks to you, Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. And we implore you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine, that we and all who share in the body and blood of your Son may be filled with heavenly peace and joy, and receiving the forgiveness of sin, may be sanctified in soul and body, and have our portion with all your saints. All honor and glory are yours, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. For those of you watching and listening who are absent from this celebration of our Lord's body and blood, we encourage you to concentrate, to reflect, to meditate on the blessing he bestows upon us, to cultivate in your heart and mind and spirit an earnest desire for this sacrament, in which we are promised that with the bread and the wine, his body and blood are given and shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Communion will be administered here at the railing. You may stand or kneel as you see fit. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest. And let your gifts to, to us be blessed. Amen.
May the body and blood of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which you have now received, strengthen you, keep you in his grace, and preserve you unto life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing powers of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining the worship here this morning. Thank you as well to those of you who are watching later and who have been listening on the radio. We'll point you one last time before we dismiss over to our website, stpeterhallettsfield.org. And there you can find some useful stuff. That's where we keep all of our worship videos. That's also where we keep the sermon pulled out by itself as a podcast. And that's also where we keep those uh, under the blog heading, where we keep those Bible studies, those study and share Bible studies. Each of those is one very simple way you can take what you've seen and heard in here today and share it with someone else out in your own everyday life. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Go in peace, serve the Lord.